الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونوبد ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون الا وانتم مسلمون ان خير حديث كتاب الله وخير حجي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور مدتها كل مدتها بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار um brothers and sisters we praise allah the almighty we bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshiped except allah and we bear witness that muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is allah's messenger and his servant seal of the prophets um brothers and sisters before i i begin my khutbah i want to begin with making a dua a supplication Allahumma inni a'udhukal min ilm la yanfa'u All I seek refuge with you from knowledge that don't benefit If we're going to be here 10 minutes 10 hours if we're going to talk it has to be beneficial So I make dua to Allah the Almighty that this will be beneficial for us This khutbah may be a little bit different than the way you're accustomed to, but it's okay. I'm letting you know that it's okay. You have scholars here to make sure that that is okay. Uh, when I was in the third grade, about eight years old, I learned a song that I never forgot. And I imagine you want me to sing it for you now. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but the song went something like this. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. <coughs> Someone once said that the most important knowledge that you can ever have is the knowledge of yourself. Well, I agree that the knowledge of self is important. But the most important knowledge you can ever have is the knowledge of Allah. So what I like to do today is two things. Number one, the most important, the knowledge of Allah. <laughs> And then number two, something about ourselves, the knowledge of ourselves. I just want, just as we begin, I want you to think about this ayah from the Quran. Allah, he mentions, اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيلُ الْيِقَابُ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ You better know, you better know, you have to know this. That Allah is strong in punishment. Don't you ever forget that. On the one hand, he's strong in punishment. On the other hand, he's forgiven and merciful. Alhamdulillah. Both of them you have to know. Who are we? Who are we? Johnny come lately. Allah mentions, I have only created the jinn and the human beings to worship me. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Johnny come lately. Everything was here by the time man was created by Allah. Everything was here. The angels, the jinn, the earth, the animals. Everything was here, and who was the last one? Johnny come lately, human beings, who you think you are, but you're special. A man, he came to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. He wanted to learn about Islam. And the Prophet, he said, Khamsa salawat, five prayers a day. He said, Hal alayya ghayruhuna, is there anything more? Anything more than five prayers? Qala la illa no except what is extra. You have to do the five. Do you have to do salatu tahajjud? It'd be good. But is it mandatory? No. You do the sunnah, it's good. But you must do it? No. Khamsa salawat. And then the Prophet alayhi salat wa salam said, Siyami, siyamu shahr Ramadan. Fast in the month of Ramadan. Now maybe we're in Sha'ban. Another month to go. We're thinking about Ramadan. You have to fast Ramadan. Hal alayya ghayruhu, is anything more than the fast of Ramadan? Qala Allah, illa antatawa'a. No. 
Maybe you will fast in Shaban. Maybe some of you six days in Shua. Maybe some of you fast on, on Mondays and Thursdays. Must you know? But Shahr Ramadan, you have to do that. And then the Prophet والسلام, said, Zakat. Anything more than that? Zakat? No, it's up, but it's extra. You have to do. You have to pay zakat. You want to give more? Good. So the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said the man turned around and walked away. And as he was walking away, he said, Wallahi, la azidu ala hadha wa la ankusu minhu. I swear by Allah, I will neither increase nor decrease. This, that. I ain't doing extra. I'm just doing that. I'm just doing the fara'id. I'm not doing extra. And the Prophet والسلام, said, Aflaha min sadaqah. He will be successful if he's telling the truth. So what we have here, we have a duty, a responsibility. Who you think you are, you won't wake up at dawn to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm amazed when I find out that Muslims who, who, don't, who don't pray, how you not pray? Allah gave you everything. How you not pray? How your children not pray? You a mother and father? Your children? You wake them up to go to school. You wake up people to go to job. But you won't wake them up to make fajr. No. You get up. You get up because Allah created you. He gave you the food. He gave you the job. He gave you the money. He gave you the wife. He gave you the children. He gave you everything. And you don't worship him? I've only created the jinn and men to worship me. Sir Isaac Newton said that I can calculate the movement of the stars, but not of the madness of man. Now you look at human beings. Look what they've done. This great creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look what they've done. They make war. They kill people. All of that. So brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to bless us, to do the very minimum. And the very minimum is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, now brothers and sisters, what I wanted to do today is focus on a hadith that I want you to look up today when you leave here. Volume number one, Muslim Hadith, Kitab al Iman. It's a very important hadith. I pray that all of you would have the, all of the hadith of Imam Bukhari. How you be a Muslim and don't have had, uh, Muslim hadith, a Bukhari hadith, a Muslim hadith. If I were you, if I didn't have any hadith, I would go today and take the money that Allah blessed you with and buy a um, uh, the hadith of Imam Bukhari. This man, subhanAllah, he collected so many hadith I you know amazingly memorized so many hadith going around the world what did the prophet say sallallahu alaihi wasallam and imam bukhari imam muslim tirmidhi abu daud ibn majah all of these people they collected hadith we should at least read them and follow them as sahih so today I'm going to focus on one thing. I think maybe, maybe every one of you will fast. It's not my khutbah today, but I'm going to do something with that. Maybe all of you, you pray every day, all day long, all night long. Maybe you do that. Maybe you pay zakat. Maybe you give sadaqah. But I want to focus on one thing today. I want to let you know that all of the ibad that we do, is pending. What do you mean pending? It's not there yet. And I'm going to tell you what I mean in a few moments. 
If you study the Quran and the Sunnah, you will find out that every once in a while, the people in Jannah will be able to see and speak to the people of the Hellfire. And the people of Hellfire will be able to speak to the people in Jannah. I'll give you one example from the Quran. The people in Jannah are looking down at the people of Hellfire and ask, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي الصَّخَرِ what are you doing in the hellfire? Kalu, Lam naqoum in al-musallim. Lam naqoum in al-musallim. We were not those who used to pray. Are you serious? So why are they in the hellfire? Ma khalaqtu jinnah wa insa illa liya'budun. Allah said, I have not created the jinn and human beings except to worship me. How do we worship? The Prophet, alayhi sallam, he said, Salu kama ra'aytumun yusalli. Prayers, you see me pray. And you want to make sure that you do it right. So number one, it's a conversation. So we learn. I, I didn't feed the poor. We know now why you're there. And then I want to, the essence of my khutbah is a hadith I'm going to give you now. I, I, I'm giving this khutbah because of this hadith. We have a relationship with one another. We know each other. And I want you to go to Muslim Hadith, volume number one, Kitab Iman. And I want you to look at this Hadith. The people in Jannah will see the people in the hellfire. And listen to what they say. Rabbana ikhwanuna. Oh Allah, these are our brothers. Yusalluna ma'ana. They used to pray with us. They fasted with us. They made hajj with us. They crying because they can't understand. Why are they? I know these folks. We used to go to the masjid together. We made hajj together. We made umrah together. We used to fast together. And they're in the hellfire. So you, a thinking person, should ask yourself the question, how are they able to see them? If not the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In uh, 1978, I was blessed to go to Mecca and study uh, at Ummul Quran. One of my teachers, um, Sheikh Hussein uh, Hamid Hassan, Hafidullah, uh, a, a teacher, a scholar, and he taught us the meaning of scholarship. He didn't make us scholars, but he taught us the meaning of scholarship. For instance, we asked him a question, and this was his typical answer. He says, you know, about your question, we have three opinions. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, this is his opinion, and this is the evidence that he used. Imam Malik has a different opinion, this is his opinion, and this is the evidence that he used. Imam Shafi'i, rahimullah, had a third opinion, this is his opinion, and uh, this is the evidence he used. I think so-and-so is the right opinion, this is what he said, and, uh, and this is what he said. I believe, and this is why. Now, two of my sheikhs were Egyptian, Sheikh Hussein, and also Muhammad Qutb. You know Muhammad Qutb, the brother of Sayyid Qutb. He wrote a book called uh, Islam, the Misunderstood Religion. And so he, he taught us, um, he taught us um, the da'wah. And uh, Sheikh um, from Sudan, uh, Jaffa Sheikh Idris, he taught us Aqid, alhamdulillah. Now, if you know anything about the Egyptians, Egyptians are famous for their humor. Every Egyptian I know, even my Sheikh. So one day he taught us a story. He says that there was a very pious young man, everybody knew him in the, in the, in the village, always praying, he's always fasting, all of these things. And one day, this young boy, young man, was praying in the masjid. And there were people close to him saying, Oh, mashallah, look how, look how pious he is. Look how this and this and this, right? And the young man, while he's praying and he's listening to them, he turns around and said, I'm also fasting. <laughs> it's not a hadith. It's a story. And, and what he was doing is he was, he was making a point that really 
How do you know if someone is fasting? How do you know? You don't know. They may look like they're fasting, but you don't know. Maybe they're not eating, but they ain't fasting. Only Allah knows. So I'm asking myself the question that when these Muslims see their brothers in the hellfire and they are seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, beseeching Allah, my, our, our, our brothers. Now, I want to speculate why they're in the hellfire. One young man told me, he said, Imam, maybe they left Islam. Maybe they used to pray with us. You know people who used to uh, practice. They don't practice no more. Probably every one of you know someone used to come to the masjid. Sister used to wear uh, khima, And now they don't, they don't do that anymore. I was um, in the airport a few years ago, Washington, D.C., Reagan Airport. And um, I was at um, one, of the, one of the airlines sitting down during the month of Ramadan, and I was reading the Quran. U.S. Airways. So a man came next to me and stood, and he said, um, I was reading the Quran. He said, is that the Quran? I said, yes. He said, I used to read the Quran. And then he said, uh, is this the month of Ramadan? I said, yes. He said, are you fasting? I said, yes. He said, I used to fast. And then he said, I used to be a Muslim. So I closed my Quran and I started talking to him, saying, you know, he needs someone to talk to. And we spoke for a long time. And then they announced that such and such flight is now boarding. That's my flight. So I get up and say, you know, that's my flight. It's boarding now. He says, I work in this airport and that plane can't go until I tell it to go. Sit down. I said, yes, sir. And I sat down. Why did I sit down? Because I felt that he needed something. That maybe I could say something to bring him back. Why are those Muslims in the hellfire? Maybe murtad. Maybe they left Islam. Audhu Billah. And so what I like to do is give you some speculation. What I'm going to say is speculation. And then I'm going to try to predict for us what Allah say when these Muslims are, are, are crying out. These, these, are, these are brothers. You see, the brotherhood don't even, don't only exist in this life. al muslim akhul muslim Muslim is a brother of a Muslim. It's not only in this life, even you see in the hereafter, they in Jannah, they're good. They in Jannah, they're good. They got what they need. They in Jannah, they're good. But they see their brothers in hellfire. How in the world do they see their brothers in hellfire? Allah made them see it for a reason and in his wisdom. So, our teacher Muhammad alayhi salat wa salam, Rasulullah, a master teacher. Let me show you one of his techniques. He would take something that you know, you're familiar with, and then give it a different, a different meaning. I give you which is the essence of my talk is what I'm going to give you right now. This, this is the reason I came here today to, to give you this. He said to his companions, Atadruna min al-muflis? Do you know what a muflis is? If you look the word muflis in the Arabic dictionary, it will say, a poor person, a pauper. But I think the best definition, in my, my opinion, not Arab, my opinion, is a um, bankrupt person. Because a bankrupt person gives the, uh, the, the thinking that they used to be rich and became poor, muflis. A person used to be rich. They're poor, but they used to be rich. He said, a muflis... So they said, a muflis is a la dirham lahu, la mata'un. They have no money, they have no wealth, they have nothing. This is the muflis. This is the regular definition. But this is the Rasulullah, sallam. he's got a different definition. He said, a muflis, fina, ma ummah, of those yati yawm al qiyamah bis salah. 
In my ummah, there will be those who come with salat. They make their salat five times a day. Maybe even, you know, they, they make extra salat. Tahajjud uh, in, 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 in the sunnas. So they come, Yom and Qiyamah, they have their salat. Wasiyam, they fasted. They fasted even in Sha'ban. They fasted in Shawal. They fasted in Ramadan. They have Salat uh, 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 fasting. Maybe even some of them, uh, the fast of, of Dawood, alayhi salat wa salam, they fasted every other day. So they got that. They got their Salat. They got their uh, Siyam. And they got their Zakat. They're good. Why didn't they have fire? And this is the answer. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَالشَّتَمَ هَذَا Shatama in the Arabic language uh, means to, to insult. You insult somebody. You're not, to, you're not supposed to insult anybody. The word uh, uh, sabba in Arabic, same thing. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَا تَسُوبُ أَصْحَابِ Don't insult my companions. So we as Muslims, you got to be careful to don't assault people. You're going to see it's going to cause you. This is the one you got to be careful about your tongue. means that you, um, you know, told a lie against somebody. Backbite, slander. Right? And stole the wealth of this person. Stealing is a big thing. And they shed the blood of that person. And they beat that person. Listen carefully. Because this is the essence of my khutbah. Allah will take their good deeds. The one who did all of this. And that person that they slandered, Allah will take your good deeds from you and give it to that person. The person you stole the money for. You love money so much you steal for it. You rob, you kill for it. You stole somebody's money, you got to pay that back. You got away with it for dunya, but you will not get away for, with it in al-akhirah. Allah will take your good deeds and put it on that person. Shed the blood of that person. Shed blood of somebody? Wallahi. A few years ago, I'm in my driveway in Brooklyn, New York. And there's a rat in my driveway. I don't know if you have rats in UK and Manchester. See, in, in New York, not only do we have rats, but we have super rats. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. We, you see the rats running down the streets with a Kentucky Fried Chicken in their mouth. No, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm serious. You know, most rats, you go like that, uh, and they run. We go like that in New York, uh, they say, what? <laughs> no, come on, man, stop it. So I'm saying, I killed a rat in my driveway. Wallahi, for three or four months, I'm feeling guilty. I can't even imagine killing a human being. I can't. Shed the blood of that person. And you beat that person up. Allah will take all of your, your, your deeds and give it to that person. Until you ran out of good deeds. And then Allah will take their bad deeds and put it on you and throw you in the hellfire. It's a muflis. I'm saying to you today, it's not just good enough to make your fast in Ramadan. Now you got to guard it. Our ibadah, our worship is like a person with a bag of gold. And there's a hole in the bag. And as you're walking with the bag of gold, all of the gold is going out of the bag. Until you have nothing left. And so maybe that's why... They're in the hellfire, even though they did of that. So I'm asking myself the question, okay, I'm reading the hadith. Um, and I'm speculating what Allah is going to say to these Muslims who are 
or speaking on behalf of, of their brothers. They're our brothers. So I'm thinking Allah will say, well, you don't know what they did. You don't know what they did? Let me tell you what they did. You know what Allah will say? Go down there. أَخْرِجُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ أَرَفْتُمْ And take out of the hellfire all that you recognize. So I'm saying to you, my dear brothers and sisters, on this day, maybe the first of Sha'ban, Allahu Adam, some people say it's the last of, um, it's, it's the last of, um, um, you know, yes. So now, we want to make sure that all of our ibadah, those you made hajj, al hajj mabru laysa lahu jaza'an illa jannah, there's no reward except jannah. But you want to make sure that you guard your hajj, your siyam, your salat, your zakat, guard it. So inshallah, I pray that all of you and your families can meet Ramadan and to fast on the month of Ramadan. And I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you keep it, that you be able to see on Yawm Al-Qiyamah the results of your fruit, of your ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, I pray that you will help your family, especially your children. We have a um, tremendous responsibility of protecting our children from this dunya. Many of them are leaving the fold of Islam. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and your family to gather your children together. And not only that, your neighbors, those of your neighbors, some of you don't even know your neighbors. In our religion, we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us to be kind to our neighbors. What's kinder than offering them Islam and the people of Great Britain? Our responsibility is not to judge them, our responsibility to invite them, invite them to the deen of Islam. Of, of Islam. There's a difference between you and I. Most of you were born as Muslims. Your parents are Muslims. My parents weren't Muslim. Um, uh, I was seven years old. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, he told us that everyone is born by nature a Muslim and their parents make them other than that. I was a Christian because my parents were Christian. I was a Baptist. So Sunday morning in the Marcy Project, 7 o'clock, early in the morning, I was seven years old, I was getting dressed to go to church. And I said to my mother, why we got to go to church anyway? My mother took her belt out. And she, oh, oh. She said, now you understand why you go to, got to go to church? I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but I didn't. And I was a Christian. And I went to church. Three weeks ago, I went to visit my mother, my lovely mother, intelligent, 89 years old. I gave a shahada. Best day of my life. She beat me at seven, I give a shahada, 89 years old. So I'm saying, take this message. It's up to the people, up to Allah, whether they accept or not. But take this message. Please. Please protect your, your ibadah. Rabbana taqabal minna innaka anta sameen alim. Rabbana la tuakhidna nasina ta'na. Rabbana wala tahmil alayna isran kama hamatu tuladina min qablina. Rabbana la tuhammilna ma la tuakitala na'bi. Wafur anna, ukfirlana, warhamna wa anta maulana fansuna lakamil kafirin. Iqamatu salah.